<laughs> okay, um, if I was gonna be looking at this problem, it says cosecant squared of theta divided by cotangent of theta equals cosecant of theta times secant of theta. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if I was gonna do this one, if I look at, if, if I'm gonna look at you know, my complicated side, I'm gonna say, this is obviously gonna be my more complicated side, right? So dealing with the fraction, I have the cosecant squared of theta. Um, one thing we could look at would be transferring this to a uh, trig identity, right? Um, but the main important thing I also wanna do is, this is a fraction and this isn't a fraction. So let's get rid of our fraction. Yes? That supposed to be C, A, C, C, What? Because you got C, C, C. Yeah, it's supposed to be, <laughs> yes. It's not Canterbury or Aquarius. Cozy can, thank you. Um, so what I would do is, first thing is I'm going to get rid of this fraction. So you guys remember, how do we get rid of our fraction, right? We always get rid of what's on the bottom. We get rid of what's on the bottom by multiplying by the reciprocal. So if cotangent is on the bottom, to get rid of it, I need to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of cotangent is tangent of theta. So I multiply tangent of theta on the top and the bottom. Those now cancel out because they're reciprocals of each other. So therefore I'm left with tangent of theta times cosecant squared of theta equals cosecant of theta secant of theta. Now, if I look at this cosecant, all right, if I go and look at my trig identities, um, cosecant is going to go and provide me a cotangent, right? So a lot of you might say, hey, let's go and transfer to a cotangent. Well, that might not always work in your best direction. You can go and try it and see where you come up with. But if I'm looking, remember, I'm trying to keep my left and my right side the same. If I throw in a cotangent there, on the right side, there's nothing with the cotangent. So before I try that, I'm going to say, how about... I need to get rid of this cosecant squared, right? So I'm probably gonna to have to do some canceling out. So what I'll do is I'll convert this to sine and cosines to see if I can cancel anything out. Did I see what I did? Why did I do this rather than change it to, a, to trig identity? Because remember, I have a squared, so I wanna get rid of the squaring. Well, what I notice is my sines there can cancel out. So if I was going to multiply these cancel out, I could be left with 1 over cosine theta times 1 over sine theta. Well, 1 over cosine of theta is going to equal secant theta. 1 over sine of theta equals cosecant of theta, which equals the right side. Yes? Um, how did you get one cosine? All right, one cosine. What I did is I just canceled these out. If you if you were to multiply, you could like multiply them out if you wanted to. What I did is you just notice that you know it's sine divided by sine. These are all multiplied, right? These are multiplied. So those two can cancel yeah, out. But don't you cancel out the one because you cancel out the sine? The what? Well, I thought it would be just co or cosine. No, because remember they cancel out. There's still gonna be a one. There. That the cosine is still on your denominator. Right? The cosine is still on your denominator. You can't just move it up to a numerator. It's still going to be on the denominator. That's why it's 1 over cosine. Does that make sense? Think about it this way. If I did, I'll, I'll end the video and I'll show you with some numbers so you can see it. 